Hello and welcome to the Knight Rider Podcast. My name is Sean D. Knight, and this is a show that will focus on my journey to become an author through independent publishing, discussions about my current writing project, and the art of writing. It is my hope that this podcast will help me to further my writing and that you will join me on this journey as I attempt to write and complete my first novel, and that this podcast will inspire you to write and publish your own story. In episode 4, I will briefly talk about my third week of live writing on Twitch before going into the main topic of developing the main character for my novel, Forget Me Not Father. I'll talk about her physical traits, her goals, mannerisms, and more as I try to create a character that will resonate with the reader. So let's go on this journey together as we write some magic. It is June 12, 2018 at the time of this recording, and the third week of live writing is behind me. I hate to say it, but it wasn't that great of a week. I didn't see any growth in the channel, though a couple of the nights I did see the return of a few viewers who made the time pass by quickly. I also didn't reach my total goal of 6,000 words for the week. In fact, I was 500 words short as on last Thursday's stream, I hit a brick wall when trying to figure out what the main character's response would be regarding whether or not she would risk using magic. This is dangerous territory because one of the worst things a writer can do is set a goal, not hit it, and then say that they will add on the words they didn't write to the next session. So that is something I will have to make sure doesn't happen again. That is a pattern I do not want to fall into. Nor should any writer fall into that routine of not meeting the word count goal and then try to tell themselves that they will catch up in the next session. But let's move on to the topic of this episode, developing the main character. So what is it about Sherlock Holmes, Edmund Dantes, Nancy Drew, Bilbo Baggins, Richard Cipher, Harry Potter, Sarah Ambry, and Harry Dresden that makes these characters memorable to us and coerce us into reading their stories and finish the books? You can have a great plot, but if your main character is not fully developed, chances are in your favor that you will forget about them. Yes, that was a reference to Katniss Everdeen from The Hunger Games. A main character that I found absolutely pathetic and made the books forgettable. Not just because the main character was indecisive and mostly useless, but the story itself wasn't that great. Not when there were other books before that did a better job with the same concept. On the other hand, you have Harry Potter. This character is an interesting case because, on one hand, he was developed enough to be interesting for a time, but he never truly developed into a great character. Instead, he was bolstered by some of the best side characters in literature. Years ago, I wrote a blog about why I considered Harry Potter one of the worst main characters I had ever read, but I can come back to that at a later time for this podcast show or post it up on my new blog site. So, looking at these characters I have mentioned shows quite a diverse group in terms of personality. Sherlock Holmes is a genius capable of leaps of logic that allows him to solve any mystery. Edmund Dantes was an honest and guileless person who got screwed over. Nancy Drew was an independent young woman who was outspoken and confident, though she has gone through changes over the years. Bilbo Baggins just loved the simple, easy life but had a streak of adventure in him. Richard Cipher was a woodsman with strong moral values and integrity who loved his craft only to have events turn him into something more while trying to stay true to who he was. Sarah Ambry is an intelligent, obstinate woman who is politically savvy and determined to make the world a better place. And Harry Dresden is one of those old-fashioned guys who doesn't really like to change and is a bit of a rebel that can't stop helping people. Of course, the events, side characters, and plots have helped to elevate these characters so that they have become memorable to the reader. And that is the challenge I and any author faces when writing a book, developing the main character or characters. In my case, I have one main character that I have to conceptualize and flesh out. If you have been following my journey through this podcast, then you have heard about how I came up with the idea, then developed the story, and how I have incorporated traits from role-playing games into the story itself. Now I have to come up with a character that will draw the reader in and get them invested in the story I want to tell. When it comes to Forget Me Not Father, I decided that I wanted to write a female character. Up until this point, I had only ever written one other female character whenever I took the time to write in order to improve my writing skills. Ironically enough, it was the character of Ginny Weasley for a Harry Potter fanfic. You see, I was disappointed in the final book of the series, but I was exceptionally irked that Harry didn't end up with Hermione. 
Instead, he ended up with Ginny, which didn't seem like the logical choice. But I wanted to challenge myself since, up to that point, I had only written male characters for my stories, so I started working on a Harry Potter and the Courtship of Ginny Weasley. I only wrote five chapters before real life drew me away from it, and that some of the plot ideas I came up for it, I wanted to then use in some of my own stories. But despite my very limited experience writing female characters, that is what I wanted my main character to be for this particular novel. I don't really have much of a reason for the decision, except that I felt that the story would be much more interesting with a woman rather than a man. She would be the daughter from the love triangle that I discussed early on in this series. So now that I knew the gender of my character, what would her name be? Let me just say that coming up with names for characters, places, etc., it's one of my biggest weaknesses as an author. Names are very important since it is one way to help establish a connection between the reader and the main character, not to mention a great name will help the reader remember that character after they have put the book down. However, I am absolutely horrible when it comes to naming my characters and locations. I think I spend more time being stuck on naming things than I do on anything else. It's why I have a book of baby names in my library. It gives me the ability to just pick the book up and randomly browse through it for a name that will hit me. In this particular instance, I decided on the name Laura. It's short, sweet, and doesn't really have any meaning to it other than from the laurel tree. At least, that is the case on the surface. But then I remembered that there is the laurel wreath, which symbolizes victory and honor, which really ties into the character and makes my choice of a name rather appropriate. If I had to think about it, it could be that my unconscious mind fixated on the name Laura because of my knowledge of the laurel wreath. This epiphany I had for a name is an example, at least to me, of why, as an author, you should try to absorb everything you can. Absorbing history, hobby, sports, little-known facts, facts about nature, other books, movies, TVs, and so on. The more information you have to draw on, the better your chances will be of coming up with ideas, plots, solutions, characters, places, settings, you know, all of that, and your subconscious will help in some way, shape, or form. So Laura Forsyth is the name of the main character in Forget Me Not Father. The name Forsyth means man of peace, but that ties more into the father than it does to Laura. Now I needed to create the image of the character. Like I do with all my original characters, she will be a mutt, though in this case I wanted to make her a little darker in skin color compared to my own, giving it a caramel tone since her father is white and mother is black. Other features include short, jet black hair, brown eyes, small nose and mouth while she will be about 5 foot 6 inches in height, but possessing a wiry strength in her lithe and toned figure. Now I mentioned her skin color, but when it comes to ethnicity, it doesn't seem to be that important for her character. Or at the very least, the reader doesn't really pay attention to it unless the setting is one that features a particular race or culture, or the author goes out of their way to talk about it. In the Knight Rider Discord channel, I asked if ethnicity was important to them, and for the most part, it doesn't seem to be unless it is somehow important to the plot. But Grubbard in the channel replied to my question and said, quote, I can't say it's really impacted me, but then again, I'm white. I like the question, though. Looking back on the books I've read, there has been surprisingly little detail on ethnicity, other than Dwarf versus Elf, of course. Once in a while, they'll add a detail part way through the book, and it clashes with the picture you formed in your head. Not necessarily in a bad way. I'd love to see a bit more diversity, end quote. Now, personally, it never really mattered to me either. Only time I ever noticed it is when an author would go out of their way to make sure the reader knows. Even then, I think a lot of people still won't notice it. A personal example that I can give you revolves around a character named Nacor from Raymond E. Feist's series of books set in the world of Midcamia. He is one of my favorite characters, but for the longest time, it didn't really click for me that his appearance would be mostly Asian. It took quite a while for this to dawn on me. One good general example of readers not really paying attention to how the author describes a character would be Rue from The Hunger Games. When mentioned in the books, it said that she had brown skin, but when people saw the character in the movie, they were shocked to see that she was black, or at least the vocal minority who actually gave a crap about her skin color didn't realize that she was black in the books. That said, I like to make my characters biracial because that is what I am. I don't have a race or a culture to really call my own, which has never affected me. But all of my main characters will be biracial because that is what I want to do. However, for the most part, it doesn't really play a large factor in the story in many cases. But back to Laura. She is a fighter and in the army because of her father who she looks up to. Because she is a fighter, this means she takes fighting very seriously, so short hair wouldn't make sense for her. 
It also makes sense why she would be toned, lithe, and strong, as well since she would practice often with sword and shield. However, since she doesn't have a lot of muscle mass, this was a factor I had to consider when deciding what she prefers to wear. To figure that out requires me to get into Laura's head and decide what she values when it comes to fighting. For her, mobility and speed are key since the majority of her opponents will be bigger and stronger than her. So when it comes to armor, she prefers leather armor with the exception of a bronze muscle cuirass. With the muscle cuirass, I am able to develop a little side story involving her getting measured for her first one, though I have yet to decide whether or not that will actually make it into the novel itself. She'll also be wielded in a gladius and kite shield along with a hooded cloak she uses for warmth and to sleep in since the region they are located in tends to be cold. As for her personality, it continues to evolve as I flesh out her history. In this story, she is 24 years old and was born in a small fishing village only to be relocated to a larger fishing town where she was two after her mother was killed by the dark wizard during a goblin raid. Since then, it has been just her and her father, but because he was also a celebrated soldier in the kingdom, she would often be left alone to take care of herself. Now, I am barely scratching the surface here with the history, but with those two facts, Laura started to evolve into a character that is self-reliant, willful, diplomatic, analytical, and intelligent. Of course, those are just broad definitions. Personality traits and quirks are also needed to try and humanize this character so that the reader can connect with her. In an attempt to make her more relatable, she has a strong love for her father and decided that she wanted to be a soldier like him, though that led to a lot of arguing between the two. Laura does enjoy fishing and sailing since her father was a fisherman before he became a soldier and shared that love of the sea with her. Unlike her father, she enjoys reading and is more of a thinking soldier that tends to think ahead while her father always prefers to deal in the here and now. This gives me an idea of how to write Laura's interactions with people. For example, she'll use fishing and military metaphors when she needs to get a point across, but some of the similarities and dichotomies between father and daughter should create some interesting scenarios and conversations. I also wanted to give her some habits as well and a reminder that she has been in the military for a little while now. In order to do this, I gave her a 2 inch scar on her cheekbone underneath her right eye. It's a scar she got in her early days of fighting some goblins. Whenever she is thinking, she'll start to stroke the scar. When she starts to do that, her left arm will be crossed over her chest, right elbow resting on the left hand, while her right hand rests on her face with fingers stroking the scar. Another quirk I added when I started writing chapter 1 during the live writing session, which you can join on twitch.tv slash night on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays starting at 9pm Eastern Standard Time, was her desire to find some iron or steel so that she can own a small sword rather than use the gladius. This desire is well known to her father who comments on it in the chapter, further showing the bond between the two. This particular trait of hers evolved from the concept that iron is rare, which I talked about in episode 3, and her desire to use a lighter sword that better fits her style. So she is constantly on the lookout for the metal because she is determined to have a better weapon. This creates another goal for Laura. Another thing about her is that she hates her father's horse, which doesn't like her in turn. I wanted to add some moments of levity, if I could, and the idea that she has a problem with her father's horse was an amusing one for me, and I hope will be for the reader. Then there are the obstacles, additional goals, challenges, and more dilemmas. One of her other goals is to be a great warrior like her father, but as the story progresses, she discovers that she is a different kind of soldier. Then there is the overall quest of trying to cure her father before he forgets everything and how that will affect her as time runs out. Of course, there is the danger of the Dark Wizard in all of this, but as I've stated in previous episodes, he will not make an appearance until the end. So there are the goblins that will be another challenge that Laura will have to overcome during her quest to find the cure. At this point in time, I would say that there are enough goals and obstacles to help establish Laura to become a memorable character, but it will all come down to the execution and how she continues to evolve. Because the character is still evolving as I am writing the book, but I have to keep asking myself, will Laura Forsyth be a character that the reader will sympathize with? Will people be able to connect with her? How can I flesh her out further to make it happen? Let me know what you think about my character in the comments, or chat with me in our Discord channel about main characters and what it takes to make a good main character. Thank you for listening to the Knight Rider Podcast. I hope you have enjoyed this show, and if you would like to learn more about the current project, feel free to contact me or join our community of fellow aspiring writers and enthusiasts. You can follow me on Twitter at Knight. 
Join our Discord channel, an invite link will be provided in the description of the show. Or you can follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Knight, where I will be streaming the writing process for my current project every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday starting at 9pm Eastern Standard Time. Now go write some magic. <laughs>